How's it going guys and welcome back to another video. So in this video I wanted to talk about the three bosses that I do to make a lot of money in this game. Now there is a lot of ways to make a lot of money in this game and of course I'm not telling you that this is the only way you can do it but you know I thought it could be quite interesting for you guys to find out exactly my three favorite things to do to make an absolute ton of money in this game. So recently I have made a lot of money and some of it has come from staking as you would have seen from my last video but a lot of that has come from just literally the same three bosses and that is the same way that I constantly make my money and it's usually pretty consistent and it's a lot of fun as well so you know what why not make a video talking about that I may crash my prices a little bit but you know I think it won't make too big of a difference so hopefully you find this video interesting you find this video enjoyable and if you do then make sure to leave a like on it and of course do subscribe if you're new to the channel as well but anyway let's not waste too much more time what I'm going to do in this video is talk about each individual boss and um, why I think it's so good and why I choose that boss specifically to spend most of my time doing I'll touch over on what exactly makes it really, really good for making money. And then I'll also touch over things about learning the boss and getting into it for people who maybe haven't tried the boss yet or are looking for new ways to make a bit of extra money in this game and maybe haven't tried out the three bosses that I'm gonna be talking about very, very soon. But basically, learn these three bosses and you'll have a hell of a good time and you'll make a hell of a lot of money very, very quickly. All right, so the first boss I'm going to be talking about is Raksha. Now, I know a pretty much everybody in this game at the moment knows about Raksha, knows that it can be really, really good money. But whether all of you have tried it or not, or whether many of you have even committed to the boss on learning it because of the prayer flicking and stuff, um, that might be a different story. So basically, this boss is something that I have picked up um, more often very, very recently. And I haven't done a massive amount of kills, but it is probably one of my favorite bosses at the moment. And the reason being is you can make a lot of money killing this boss and to be honest once you've got the prayer flicking down it's really not that bad and it is kind of fun you're constantly on your feet you've constantly got to be thinking and paying attention and that's the sort of bosses that i really enjoy doing not only that though as we were talking about in the main focus of this video you can make a absolute fortune at this boss the greater ricochet codex at the moment is still currently over 1 billion gold and if you got that as a solo that is absolutely huge but of course if you got that as a duo as well which would make your life a bit easier having someone to dps um, or maybe you being the dps as well then you've got a 500 mil split there from a duo boss absolutely amazing the greater chain codex also has gone up a little bit in price recently i think it went to around about 300 mil and then went back down to about 200 mil because of um rumors i believe of mage being buffed possibly but it went up and it's gone a little bit back down but it hasn't gone all the way back to what it was so 200 mil is still a really really good um drop to be able to get of course at this boss the greater ricochet codex is going to be the drop that you will be aiming for but you absolutely won't be complaining if you got one of these as well However, I will admit that I've seen some people really have a bad time at this boss. I think I've been quite lucky in the fact that I have had quite a lot of splits and drops on my own log from the amount of kills I have done so far. However, I know a lot of people who have gone absolutely dry, done hundreds and hundreds of kills, not had a single drop, only for their first ever drop to actually be something like the Blast Diffusion Boots, which are about 10 to 12 mil at the moment. That could be incredibly heartbreaking, as well as the Laceration Boots are really, really cheap. The Range Boots at the moment, I believe are still at decent money, and if you got one of those, you'd be probably quite happy with that. But the Laceration Boots and the Blast Diffusion Boots definitely are a little bit on the low end. However, like I said, you've got that chance of getting a lower value item and you've also got that chance of getting that one bill GP drop, injecting a massive cash flow straight into your bank. This boss will probably be easiest for you guys to do on range and obviously the better range gear you have, the absolute better it will be. Greater Ricochet is incredible here, as well as a Seren God Bow, but back criminal bolts with dual ascensions and some Serenic or even probably Pernix armor, you'll probably be absolutely fine with a little bit of practice. The only downside to this boss that people really don't enjoy really is the prayer flicking and once you've got that down if it's not something that really just ruins it for you 100 then you can have a lot of fun at this boss getting better at player prayer flicking um, using your soul split to try and keep as much health up as you can using resonance to get your health back it's definitely a boss that you're going to be thinking at if that sounds like something you'd enjoy then i'd recommend checking out raksha quick common known tip here but for people who maybe didn't know if you bring laceration boots and a scythe you can actually blade a dive with that scythe which will give you an aoe effect um landing on the pools and if you use that on the pools it'll probably wipe them all in one hit as well and it'll just allow you to kill those off very very quickly for phase three 
The second boss, or if you could really call it a boss, is ED1. Now, the reason I said if you can really call it a boss is because you're going to have to run the whole dungeon. But I guess you're only there really for Seryu, as he is the dragon that you want to kill to get his scales, which make you an absolute fortune. I've spoken a lot about Seryu recently. I did Seryu in my last staking video and made an absolute fortune. If you haven't seen that, go and check that out. It is a hell of a lot of to see me go and stake with that much money all in one go. And also, one of my biggest videos lately talking about how good ED1 is for money, which is very, very relevant to this as well, was basically talking about Seryu and ED1. So we won't go too into detail about this because if you want to, then I will link up above on the top of the screen now where a card is and you will have to click that and go through to that video where I talk about ED1 a lot more in depth. But basically to quickly summarize it, Seryu is the last boss in ED1. I'm sure a lot of you probably know, but for anyone who is getting into bossing and want to find out what they could do, ED1 is absolutely amazing consistent money of around about 20 mil plus per hour, depending on how fast you are. I am basing that off getting two to three runs per hour. Or even if you can only get two in your first hour, use your rest of your aura and make sure you get a total of five over two hours. That is around about 20 mil plus per hour and it can be a hell of a lot more, as you will see if you go and check out my last staking video as well. But this boss, the scales that Seryu drops are worth nearly 1 mil each at the moment and you can actually get upwards of 100 scales and that can then double as well. Obviously that is a lot rarer, but if you get drops of maybe 30 to 40 to 50, any, any sort of scale around that amount, that's a massive drop for you to get. The average from here is probably around about 12 scales per kill and of course the Seryu fight is kind of difficult to learn, but once you've got it down, holy crap, this boss is so fun. I literally could do Seryu all day every day. It's a shame that I have to run the whole dungeon because I'm quite slow. I'm hoping to get a lot faster at that, but Seryu is probably one of my most enjoyable bosses in this game. I could do that fight over and over again without any sort of stress whatsoever. Basically, throughout the fight, you're gonna be jumping up on his back, breaking three crystals which hold him in place to free the dragon and then once you've freed him then hey you've got your scales and hopefully you will get a hell of a lot of those to sell off but yeah like i said this is probably my favorite way to make money in the game at the moment so i do highly suggest that you do check out ed1 and if you are looking for more information on the actual run itself all the other bosses in the dungeon then maybe check out my recent video where i spoke about how good seru really is to make a lot of money well Finally on this list is probably a boss that a lot of you saw come in. To be honest, I suppose this list may not have been anything too unpredictable, but these are the three bosses that I like to invest a lot of my time in, and it's going to be Telos. Now, Telos is a boss that can make you probably the best money in the game, and it's been that way for an absolute lot of time. However, you will need to put a lot of time into learning this boss to be able to get it to that position. At the moment, I can safely streak from 0% all the way to 500%, and which after that, I tend to either claim the chest because hey that's a lot of money and I am not that good after 500% but if you can keep going the further you can go the more money you can make from this boss and honestly the best thing about this boss other than just the massive value of the big rare drops that he does drop is the consistency in the money if you streak from what zero to 500% which is a fair amount of kills and it is, does take a lot of practice you can definitely expect to make a hell of a lot of money from that it is something that will pay out a every single time that you do it. You're not going to do it one time and make like 10 mil. It's going to be a lot more than that and you can pretty much guarantee it. It does take quite a lot of time to do that streak, but once you get there, the profit per hour that you get, even without a drop, will probably be on par, if not actually better gold per hour than any other boss that you probably can solo in this game as well. However, like I said, Telos is definitely a boss that takes a lot of practice. He has a hell of a lot of mechanics and it definitely takes a lot of sort of time to invest into this boss to get it very, very consistent. But you never know, maybe you're just a pro PVMer that can go there, learn in maybe a few hours and make an absolute fortune. But let's talk about those massive ticket drops. The Seren God Boat at the moment has gone up in price so much. It is absolutely ridiculous how much it is. I think it's around about 1.5 bill as of making this video. So if you could get the Orb Set and the God Bow, the Dormant Bow, that's 1.5 bill. However, the Dormant Bow by itself is currently sitting at a ridiculous price of 800 mil for a Dormant Seren God Bow. I have had like two of these in the small amount of kills that I have done at Telos and they weren't worth anywhere near that price when I had them. 
hell. That's a bit gutting, but the price of this has gone up so much since Ragshu's release, since range got a massive buff, and since everybody decided that, hey, we're all going to use range now. The price of the Seren God Bow has gone up so much, 800 mil just for the Dormant, and they're actually looking at it now, 1.6 bill for the um, actual Seren God Bow. So it's absolutely ridiculous, but not only that, the um, Zaros God Sword, the Dormant is a nice 400 mil, and the actual Zaros God Sword is 1.1 bill, the Staff of Sliske then sitting around about 880 mil as well. So there's a lot of money to be made here, and it's definitely a boss that if you invest your time into, you will make so much money coming out of it. Like, it is ridiculous. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about with Telos, though, is I have spent a lot of hours learning this boss, and to be honest, even when I wasn't getting kills and making a lot of money, I had the most fun that I've probably had in this game ever. Like, full stop. Learning this boss, and even doing it now, is my most enjoyable thing to do end of story at the moment i probably could argue that ed1 is very comparable and i am enjoying that but i think at the end of the day once my seru kill count catches up with my telos kill count maybe that i will probably still pick enjoying telos a lot more than um doing ed1 or something like that obviously mixing things up is really really good but this boss to me is probably the most fun thing to do in the terms of pvm and in all honesty if you are a high level player and you really want to challenge yourself and you really want to make as much money as you can then if you're not doing Telos, then you are absolutely missing out. You need to get here. You need to learn this boss. It is so worth it. A lot of fun, a lot of great money, and it is consistent money. You'll make an absolute fortune. The boss fight itself has an enrage system, which below 100% enrage, you will be dealing with four phases. Above 100% enrage, you will have five phases, and then there will be different enrage points as you do get better at Telos once you reach those higher enrages. Then the fight does change very slightly at certain points of that as well. These are all things you'll probably learn along the way. I'm not going to go into it too much as we've already spoke about Telos for nearly five minutes now. But if you are going to learn Telos, then I would highly recommend investing in some decent magic gear because the magic spell book and the stun locks and basically magic in general is definitely the way to go at this boss as it will make kills a lot more consistent a lot easier to control tell us with stun locking all that sort of good stuff you can do it with melee and you can do it with range but if you're going to be learning this boss and trying to get consistent kills magic is definitely the way you want to go so if you're looking to make the best money in the game definitely do try out tell us anyway that is probably pretty much going to bring us towards the end of the video but before I properly move on to my outro, I just wanted to mention my Discord channel. Guys, I do have a Discord channel and in there, there is a channel where you can look for groups with other players. There is players from all skill levels. There's people who are absolutely amazing at PVM. There are people who are my level at PVM, pretty just average. And then there are people who are learning as well. I am quite keen to see if I can help as many people as I can learn bosses. So if there may be something in the future. If you guys are interested, let me know um, where I might see if there's people who want to have maybe a mental role in the Discord, if we can get some more people. And then I'll try and figure out some sort of reward system for people who help other players learn the game as well. And maybe we can do that with rewarding maybe bonds or something along those lines we will have to see what happens but basically if you're looking to get into pvm with any other sort of players or whether you just want to be part of an awesome discord community which we have so far then do join there will be a link in the description get involved and get yourself some roles assigned for the pvm and if you have any questions if you have anything you would like me to add to it then give me a message ask me i am pretty active in there as much as i can be as well so if you want to even just get in there just to catch up with me then do that as well but get in my discord and do get involved it would be absolutely awesome to see a hell of a lot more of you guys there otherwise let's um just basically end the video here i hope you all really enjoyed the video if you did of course make sure to like because it does help it get suggested to others and also do subscribe to the channel if you are new if you are new to the channel and you are not subscribed and you have maybe seen more than just one of my videos then hey why the hell aren't you subscribed already because if you're watching a lot of my videos you might as well get subscribed get those notifications on because it just makes sense anyway thank you again all so much for watching i really really do appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one See you later, guys. Bye. As always, thank you so much to my channel members. We have Andy V and Griffo Tubes. You guys are absolutely awesome, so thank you very, very much. If anyone else is interested in seeing the perks that you do get for being a channel member, you will get things like early access to videos with no ads, stuff like that, uh, some emotes and stuff. But there is a join button next to the subscribe button if you want to check those perks out.